This is True Crime Out Loud. I'm your host, B. And I'm your host, Jen. And this week's case is going to take us to Le Mans, France. Known for the Le Mans race that takes place on public roads throughout the town. It has a population of 143,000, but when our case takes place in 1936, it has a population of about 85,000. And this week's case will center around two sisters, Christina and Leah. The case this week is going to cover the Papin family, and specifically two sisters in that family. Gustave and Clemence Papin had met when... They started dating in the early 1900s. In 1901, Clemence became pregnant, so Gustave married her. And they had Amelia, who was born in February of 1902. A little over two years after Amelia was born, the family moved to Le Mans. The reason they moved is because Gustave thought Clemence was having an affair. Well, Clemence was not happy about moving, and she threatened to kill herself. But eventually, they did what Gustave wanted, and they moved to Le Mans. In 1905, they had Christine, and in 1911, they had Leah. But the marriage between Gustave and Clemence deteriorated very quickly. Clemence was said not to show affection to any of her family, that being her husband and her children. And at the time, she was said to be unstable. Gustave was known to be an alcoholic, and he would be violent with his family. Amelia, the oldest child of Gustave and Clemence, when she was about 9 or 10, she went to live at Bon Pasteur Catholic Orphanage, it was reported that Gustave had raped Amelia around this time. Well, Clement said he didn't actually mean to rape her. He was drunk and accidentally ended up in her room. And it was also reported to the orphanage that Amelia had enticed her father. Now, we're talking about a 9 or 10-year-old child. Christine, the middle child, was very young at this time, and she was given to Gustave's sister for about seven years. After that, she was sent to an orphanage. Leah was given to Clemence's brother, and Leah lived with him until he died. But after he died, and this occurred, the death of her uncle, when she was about 15 years old. Well, by this time, Clements and Gustave had divorced. Amelia, the oldest child, eventually joined the convent at the orphanage, and she became a nun. So Christine and Leah, the two other daughters, were in the orphanage. Christine was six years older than Leah, and Christine wanted to be like Amelia and become a nun. Now, Clements, she would not have it, and she decided she needed Christine to work to bring in money for the family. When Leah got old enough, Leah was also put to work by Clements. They were both working as maids in Le Mans, and they always tried, because they were sisters and they were close, to work in the same home. And in 1926, they landed that job together as live-in servants for the Lancelon family. And this family was comprised of Monsieur René, a retired solicitor, or here in the U.S., basically a lawyer, and Madame Leone, his wife. They had an adult daughter, Genevieve. Christine began there first, and then two months later, her sister Leah began working there. They worked about 12 to 14 hours a day, and they had a half day off each week to attend church. They also enjoyed a, about a two-hour break each day after lunch. And this was consistent with normal working hours for house servants. They were treated well and fed well, 
and they were even allowed to have heat in their attic, which was a big deal at the time. Their salary was $2,000 a year, but for that money, Madame Leone had very high standards. She walked around the house wearing white gloves to check the furniture for dust, and she would send notes through Genevieve to the kitchen to kind of give feedback on Christine's cooking. Monsieur René did not speak to them the entire seven years that they worked for him. Madame preferred to communicate through writing and not speaking, so they had very little direct face-to-face -face communication with their bosses, essentially. They attended church every week, but did little or nothing else socially or anything else. They showed no interest in the outside world and really only wanted to spend their time with one another. The two servants were described as very quiet and unusually close. And at times their mom would even come visit them, but there was always this contention between Christine and her mother. They had numerous arguments, which usually centered around money. In sometime around 1931, they had a complete falling out with their mother and she stopped visiting. Now, the girls had been giving their mother their wages. She is the one who put them to work in this job. Some reports suggest that Madame Leone put a stop to this, but we were unable to back this up with any hard evidence. The mother continued to write them, but only occasionally, and usually they just ignored her. This brings us to the events of February 2nd, 1933. Christine and Leah were home, and it was just the two of them. Christine had begun ironing, but once she started using the iron, it caused a fuse to blow, so the power goes out in the home. The iron had just been returned that day for causing the same issue. But an electrician who worked on an iron couldn't find nothing wrong with it. And now we go to Walmart, we buy us an iron for $15, $20. If it causes a problem, we throw it out. Well, back then you didn't do that. You had somebody actually work on it, but they couldn't find anything wrong with it. So Madame and Genevieve were out shopping and they returned home about 5 30 p.m. because they were going to get ready to meet Monsieur René for dinner at a family member's home. Monsieur René arrived at the home where they were supposed to meet for dinner, but his wife and daughter were not there yet. So he gives it a little bit of time. You know, they're women, they're getting ready, they're probably running a little late, but he became concerned when they did not show up at all. So he goes back to his home with another family member between 6.30 and 7 p.m. So he's waited about an hour to an hour and a half for his wife and daughter. When they get to the home, they see the lights out except for a candle burning in the attic, which was the third floor. And this was the bedroom of their servants, Christine and Leah. He tries to get into his house, but it's locked up from the inside, and he couldn't get into his own home. So they did what anybody would do in this situation, and they fetched the police. The police were able to climb a back wall and make entry into the home. When they go in this dark home, because remember, a fuse had blown, lights are out, they start up the first flight of stairs to the second floor, and on the landing, they see an eyeball looking at them. On the second floor, they see blood everywhere, and it was reported that blood was going up about two meters on the wall. Then they see two bodies that were completely unrecognizable which was determined to be Madame Leone and Genevieve. Madame was lying face up. Her eyes were found in the folds of the scarf she was wearing. Her face was completely destroyed to the point she couldn't be identified by her face. There were teeth scattered around the area. Madame's legs were spread apart. She only had on one shoe and her skirt was pulled up and her undergarments were pulled down. 
Genevieve was face down with a bloody knife next to her. Her skirt was also pulled up and her undergarments pulled down. When they turned Genevieve over, her face was also destroyed. She was missing her eyes. The one on the landing was hers and the other one was underneath her. Her legs and buttocks had deep knife lacerations. It was reported that her legs had slices that looked like the way you would score a loaf of bread prior to baking it. And if you've ever seen an actual loaf of bread before it's loaf of bread like we get that you make a sandwich on, it's scored all along the way and has these little slits in it. So, of course, this is described as a very brutal and gruesome scene. They were initially thinking that the maids were probably in a similar condition. So they go to their attic room and the doors locked. They finally were able to gain entry and they found them in the bed together. Now, this is where all the reports kind of go all over the place. Some say they were in bed together in their robes. Some say they were in bed together naked. And there's been different articles that point to maybe there was some kind of sexual involvement between the sisters. Due to the age of the case, it's hard to confirm any of that. But regardless, we do know they were in the bed together. There was a bloody hammer next to them, which had chunks of hair on it. Both women immediately confessed and were arrested. So what kind of story do Christine and Leah give to the police to explain this gruesome and unusual and bloody crime scene? Well, Christine did most of the talking and Leah pretty much affirmed what Christine said. They said the fuse blew in the house due to the iron. When Madame got home, she was furious about this and an argument ensued at the top of the stairs on the second floor of the home. Christine got angry and went after Genevieve and tore her eyes out using only her fingers. Leah heard all this commotion and she joined in and grabbed Madame. Christine told Leah to gouge out the eyes of Madame, so Leah did. Christine then went downstairs to the kitchen where she retrieved a knife and a hammer. They went back upstairs and the two sisters used both of these items on both women. There was also a pewter pitcher that sat at the top of the stairs. They took this pitcher and used it to repeatedly bash their faces and heads. Christine said, it was either us or them, and we were just defending ourselves. I do have pictures on our website, and if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the pictures pop up of Christine and Leah when they were arrested. And you can see them. They are arrested wearing their robes. So when you see that one, just know what that is. Well, obviously, that's their account of what happened, but... That's not going to be enough to avoid a trial. And in September of 1933, they go to trial for these crimes. And at the time the crimes are committed, Christine is 27 and Leah is 21. They made no attempts to deny their actions. The prosecution argued that Christine was the mastermind and Leah was a follower. They had some doctors examine these women and said they were unusually close and this relationship caused them to act out together. Now, three other doctors did psychiatric evaluations and they found no pathological mental disorder. And they noted that their, the sister's attachment to each other was unusual, but it was still familial in nature and not sexual. Christine and Leah's lawyer argued insanity as a defense to this crime. And he pointed out that one of the sisters had been raped they had both lived in an orphanage. There was an extensive history of mental illness in the family. But the trial only lasted 13 hours, which is incredible because like by modern standards for a murder trial, that that's nothing. 
It took a jury of 12 men only about 40 minutes to find the sisters guilty. And Christine was sentenced to death by guillotine while Leah was given 10 years in prison. And this was because Christine was considered the mastermind and Leah was just following her, her orders, I guess. Christine was described as insolent, but a hard worker and a good cook. They noted that she was of average intelligence, while Leah was introverted, quiet, and obedient. She had a lower intelligence than, than Christine, which fed into what Jen said about the prosecution's theory that Christine was the mastermind and Leah was just kind of the follower. In fact, Leah was said to have looked to Christine as a mother figure. That's still not a real good explanation of why. Well, it's obviously because of the nature of the damage to the bodies and everything that it's not, it wasn't self-defense. It almost looks like overkill. And that has led to several arguments and theories about why it actually happened. And it has been speculated that because the girls were of a lower class than the Lancelon family, that they just simply rebelled against them. Others say that they attacked the women after the argument about the iron, and they just basically channeled their rage that they had against their own mother due to being starved of love and attention during their younger years. There was also some question as to whether Madame may have found out that the sisters were having a physical relationship. Like we said, there's really nothing to substantiate this one way or the other. But, you know, is it possible that she saw them engaged in some type of physical relationship? That could be a possible explanation for why their eyes were removed. Christine most likely today would be diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. Both of the sisters had what's called shared paranoid disorder. And this is small groups or pairs of people who become isolated from the outside world. And they just develop this really intense paranoid view of the outside world. And in that relationship, usually, usually one person is the dominant force in that relationship. And they dominate the thoughts and beliefs of the follower, so to speak. And we're looking back on this years uh, i mean almost 100 years now later but it's so brutal and so just out there kind of crime i mean it's i don't i don't know i mean it just you want more explanation i guess and we just don't have it and can't find it so after the trial both women were jailed but they were put in separate cells Christine's sentence was converted to a life sentence, which was common during the time for women who were sentenced to death to be commuted to life. But Christine quickly became despondent and severely depressed. She began to starve herself. They said she was prone to violent fits and hallucinations. They said when she had a fit or an episode, she tried to gouge out her own eyes. Now, this was before it came to trial. So they brought Leah to see her to try to help her mental state. And she threw herself onto Leah just like helplessly. Now, again, some reports say the conversation and the interaction implied a sexual relationship, but we don't know. Once Christine and Leah were separated again, Christine continued to deteriorate even further. So they send her to a mental institution, which was called an insane asylum at the time. Christine died less than four years after the trial on May 17th of 1937. Cause of death was cachexia. And cachexia is basically the wasting of the body, you know, where she wasn't eating or taking care of herself. They said she was just devastated being away from her younger sister and wasted away into nothingness and died. Leah, she was released after only eight years due to good behavior. She went to live with her mother in another town and worked as a hotel maid under a false name. Now, Leah died in 1982. 
But this has also been questioned. There was a documentary that was done in 2000, and it was said to have found Leia in a hospice facility where she had a stroke and was unable to speak, so she couldn't confirm who she was. But this Leia, or the one that was said to be the other Leia, died in 2001. And obviously this case has many different facets and things that could point to why these women committed such a gruesome murder. Abuse and abandonment as children, class struggles, untreated mental health issues. I mean, it's like a textbook of reasons why people commit crime, but we really might not ever know the real reason why. And in this case, in my opinion, it's probably some combination of all of those things. Mental health wasn't treated the same way it was in 1933 as it is now in 2021. People now have options available to help them. There's been advancements in medication and just in psychiatry and psychology in general that can help with these situations. And there were also not the same checks and balances in place to keep track of children and their welfare. And that's what kind of started them off on, on the wrong path, I think, is they, they ended up away from their parents, they had a bad relationship with their parents, and they end up in the orphanage, and then sexual assault occurs and, and all that. And it's just, there's systems in place now to at least mitigate the risk of that. It probably doesn't completely eliminate it, but imagine DHR or Department of Human Resources or Child Protective Services, those weren't really a thing back then. There certainly weren't any labor laws that prevented their mother from making them work as maids at, from a very early age and provide all the money to her. Well, not only working, but working so many hours a day and they had a half a day off each week and that's when they would attend church. But they did get two hours off after lunch. It just... You know, we're not used to that nowadays where we have the 40-hour work week, and maybe people were used to it then, but taking a young person and doing that to them, I mean, that's, I don't know, that to me, that kind of borderlines abuse in and of itself. I think that was just the societal norm for the time, though. I mean, I think that if you look at that same period, you probably had male children who began factory life at 14 or 15, something we wouldn't even consider today, but things just worked differently back then. And in the end, the story is really about the two women who were brutally murdered and a man who lost his wife and his daughter to the violence of these two sisters without any real solid explanation, just a tough case. This case took place in France, and we tried with pronouncing the French names as best we could. So forgive us if they're not spot on. I'm sure somebody will let us know exactly how to pronounce it. I think you tried harder than I did. Names really, names really throw me for a loop. But we hope you enjoyed this week's case. And as always, we'll see you next week. We would like to hear your thoughts on this and all of our cases. And as always, you can reach us by email at truecrimeoutloud at gmail.com, Facebook and Instagram at truecrimeoutloud. Outloud is two words, not one, and Twitter at TCOutloud. Photos, links, and sources for this case can be found on our website at www.truecrimeoutloud.com.